Hey guys, it's Vivs here from Design Coder. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the custom font in our simulator. On our design preview, we have Source Sans Pro dot Light, which you see on the left hand side here. And on the right hand side, in our simulator, we are using the default system provided font by Xcode. We want to use the same font as the one over here. To do so, we need to include that font file, which is in the form of a file with an extension TTF or OTF right here inside Xcode. Now before we do that, let's try to understand something about font families and fonts. Fonts basically have families and within the family there are several members that resemble each other in some way. For example, if you say Roboto, Roboto may be the name of the family. Inside the family there are different variations like there is Roboto Thin, there is Roboto Italic, Bold, Condensed, Medium, Light and so on. So we need to find out exactly the font within the family so that we can use it. In the first step, we are going to go to Xcode here and we are going to go in the top left area over here. So just go here and right click and create something called a group where I'll say new group here. I'll call the group as resources and just hit return on your keyboard. Once again, I will right click on the resources here and create another group here. And this time I will call it fonts. Now within this folder, I plan to put my custom font file. Just hit return on your keyboard. Now I go to my assets folder here where I have all the stuff needed. There is the source sans pro underscore light dot ttf file right here. I'm going to select this file and I'm going to drag and drop it right inside the fonts directory over there. So immediately you get this option at the top that says choose the options for adding these files. So we want to make sure that a copy of the file is present in our Xcode project even if we delete the original file from our system on the Mac and we want to make sure that the groups are created. Most importantly, the font should be available in the app once it is running on the user's device, right? So just select that app option over there and click finish over here. So now in my project navigator, that is the first tab in Xcode, I can see the file source stands pro light or TTF under the fonts folder here. If I select this file, I can even view the contents of the file over here. What I need to do next is to link this file or tell our app that we need to use custom fonts. To do that, I'm going to select the file called info.playlist right here from the project navigator. Immediately you open this file and you notice some weird things written over here. This file is where you specify all the configuration information or properties of your app. For example, here you have specified the name of your storyboard file, the name of your launch file, what kind of orientation you're going to run this app on, whether it's portrait, landscape and all those things are specified inside this file. And we need to add our custom font here as well. To do that, just select this plus sign anywhere or you can just right click out there and you can have this option which says add row. Just select that option over there. And here you are presented with a list of choices that you can add. Let's say fonts over here. It says fonts provided by the application. Just hit return over there and make sure the type of this is an array over here. And you can just expand it and then click the plus sign. At that point, you see that item zero and item one have been added. We don't need item one, just remove it. For item zero, we can just select it. And over here, we can just double click and start typing the name of our file, which would be source underscore sans underscore pro underscore light dot ttf. Let me type that. Once you have done typing, you just can hit the return key here. And that's all we need to take care of. The font is now linked over here in the application. We are telling our app that we are using a custom font somewhere in our code. We are not sure, but we need this file. Now we can refer this file by going back to the view controller.swift file inside the view did load method, which is called when our view controller has loaded its views. I'm going to remove the statement that changes the value of the label. Rather, I'm going to say text time dot font. And here I can specify a custom font that my app should use. I can say equals to create an object of a class called UI font here it is going to have an initializer you see there are three variations of this initializer we're going to use the third one where you need to specify the name and then you need to specify the size of your font let's enter the name here so I have given the name as source sans pro light gtf and the size as 128 I have changed the font to a custom font let's try running the app and see if this works or not when you run the app this is what you see the custom font has not been activated. In fact, you lose your default font that you already set up in the main.storyboard file. Why is this so? If you take a look here in the method, the name is perfectly right as per what we have entered. But the problem is this name is not the name of the file, which is where most people make a mistake. 
This name is actually the name of the font within its family. To find that, let's print all the families and try to understand what's going on. I'm going to use the print statement here and I will say UI font family names. This method is going to return the list of all the families that are available currently within our system. Let's take a look at the output in the console debug area below. By this way, if you don't see this window, you can just click on this middle icon on the top right and you can get that debug area. Now when you run the app, you notice we have our debug area here filled with a lot of stuff and we should be able to find our source sans prod of this list. Just click here anywhere and hit command F on your keyboard. Let's see if there is a source sans pro out there. There you go. There is source sans pro, but this is just the general family name. There are variations inside this family like we discussed earlier. So we need to find out exactly which variation we are currently using in our project and get the name out of that variation to do so. Let's go back and code some stuff inside the view did load method over here. So I'm going to use a for loop here at the top left and I will say for family in UI font. Now I'm just going to loop over the family and find out all the members within that family. To print out all the members of a family, I will need one more for loop inside this one. I will say for font in UI font font names for family name where I will supply the family over here. This is going to let me print the stuff that I'm interested in. I can just use the print statement here and I can print the font out. Now when I run the app, notice the list of all the font names that have popped up over here. This is all the fonts including your family names out there. So we need to search for our font would be Source Sans Pro, right? There you go. There's the one that is the name of our exact font Source Sans Pro dash light. Let's select this name and make sure that you include this as the reference now in the UI font method right below. We don't need the for loops anymore. We can just remove them and we can go here instead of the source sans pro TTF light, remove that and replace that with what we just found. This would be the name of the font within the family. Now, when you save this and you run the app, let's see what happens. And look at that. Bam. There's our custom font that is being placed inside the UI label exactly the way we wanted it in the design preview. With this, we complete the design of our app to match our design preview. Except for the fact the toggle button is changing the images out here, nothing else works at this point. But in the upcoming videos, we are going to make the timer run and play the notification just the way we want it to. In the meantime, stay tuned with Design Coder. All the videos covering the design, the Android part and the iOS development are right here on designcoder.io. So be sure to sign up right today and get unlimited, unrestricted access to all the videos. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.